الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علیہ علی و صحبہ وسلم اما بعد حبت فی اللہ ان انٹرسٹنگ کوشچن واز پوزڈ ریگارڈنگ بکس ٹو اسٹڈی فرام دا منہج آف دا سلف دا کلاسیکل ٹیکسٹ ایز ویل ایز دا کنٹیمپرری ٹیکسٹ اینڈ آلسو ان دا کوشچن واز دا اسٹیٹمنٹ دیٹ دا دعات ان دا ویسٹ are watering down the principles of Salafiya based on falsehood. And there were some other statements posed in the question, and we'll deal with it at another time. However, what I want to mention, first and foremost, the books of the Salaf are, are well known. The books that of the classical texts like Shara Sunnah Imam Ahmed, or Asul Sunnah, Shara Sunnah Imam Babahari, the books on Iman, <clears throat> Uh, from the books Kitab al-Tawheed, Imam Ibn Khuzayma, of course this is much later, uh, the books like Imam al-Alqa'i's books, uh, book of, uh, and Imam al-Ajuri's book, As-Sunnah. So those books are well known and you can find those texts uh, mentioned and mentioned by the scholars and translated, translated as far as the titles. And Amongst some of the contemporary books is there are so many, there are so many explanations uh, of books by many of the Emmet uh, Sunnah from amongst the scholars in Saudi, from amongst the scholars uh, in Yemen, scholars in Egypt, scholars from around the world who Yahtambi Kutub Salaf, that give importance to the books of the Salaf. So those things I don't think are any mystery. But I think what is uh, problematic about the question is when we look at the, the question in the scale of the du'at or watering down, the du'at in the West or Salafi in the West is being uh, watered down. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man bihi khayran fiddin. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him fiqh or understanding of the religion. In light of that hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam it shows us the importance of having fiqh fi deen, of gaining an understanding of the religion. And even when we look at the books of the Salaf and the Athar of the Salaf and the Minhaj of the Salaf, there's fiqh, immense fiqh in that. Fiqh is in understanding and how to apply it. So for example, you cannot say Seattle, Washington is like nudged. For example, at any time, now or in the past. Or you can't say that Shem, you know, Syria and Iraq and all of those places that, and Jordan and Philistine and all those places that make up Shem, uh, you know, in the first few hundred years of the religion is anything like the UK, like London, for example. So what this lets us know, Wahhabitifillah, as the scholars have mentioned, throughout their books that it requires fiqh and it requires ilm and that fiqh and ilm give you the understanding on how to practice in various societies through various times on how to practice those ahkam that the salaf uh, practiced so for example making hajr of people in ahl bid'ah this requires fiqh It requires looking at the masale and the mafasid. It requires looking at the harms and the benefits. And again, time and place make an impact upon the ahkam. It's not always the same. And anyone who tells you other than that, then this does not go in accordance with what, the, uh, the, what we understand from the religion and what we see from the salaf al-saleh and what we see from... Uh, the scholars throughout time and that's why what it, what this uh, implies or the implication is is that we have to have fiqh fi deen so how you so you know how to practice those principles so for the lay person it may appear that all oh, the, the 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 students they're going off at all the students they're watering down the minhaj they're doing this they're doing that well what's going on in Yemen and the masajid in Yemen is nothing like the reality in America And it's nothing like the reality in France or Belgium or Sweden. So you have to know that when you apply that fiqh, the aqidah doesn't change. The minhaj doesn't change. 
but the fiqh and how you understand and how you make tatbiq, how you practice those principles, that requires knowledge and of course that it doesn't stay the same on how you deal with a mukhalif, how you, how you deal with someone who differs from the sunnah, how you deal with ahl bid'ah, all of those things require fiqh and they require looking at the time and the place and how to practice those principles and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil so as we mentioned that it is very important to have fiqh fi deen when it comes to this mas'ala and it comes to all the messiah in the deen that we need proper education and the tools and that's why the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said man yiradallahu bihi khayran yifakaw fi deen whenever Allah wants good for a person he gives him fiqh for understand, uh, fiqh of the religion, uh, understanding the religion. So I wanted to mention, you, uh, since you asked about some of the books of uh, the Salaf, of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah, that are very important books. And again, these are Arabic books, so you do need the Arabic language. But some of the important uh, tools that you need in your Mektaba uh, that are very important, that are Minhajiya books uh, from their Asl, are books, for example, we have... Um, uh, for example, we have like, <clears throat> um, we have, here's a shara, uh, ki, here's a uh, Asul sunnah for example, we mentioned Usul sunnah and actually that is Usul, Usul sunnah now, uh, and this has uh, been explained by Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi al-Madkhali, and then also we have an explanation of Shara Usul sunnah uh, this is by uh, explained by uh, Sheikh uh, Abdullah Bukhari, and those kind of books are very important minhajia books. Those books uh, are books, uh, for example, of Imam Ahmed. This book that is here. This is uh, well, actually this is explained by Sheikh Zaid. Sheikh Zaid Al Madkhali. And he's explaining uh, what is known uh, from one of the books of, of the Salaf, known as uh, <coughs> the uh, the Sunnah of uh, Abi Zamanin. And so this is a very important book uh, with regards to those books. And, and uh, Shara Sunnah, Imam Muzani, uh, Shara Sunnah, Imam Babahari, books in Al Asma'i wa Sifat, because really these are books of Aqidah as well. And Al Imam, Al Iman by Ibn Abi Sheba, um, uh, and, and so many books, I just can't think of some of the names right now, but those are very important. This is a very important, uh, down here we have. Uh, likewise, uh, Imam al um his Ittiqad uh, Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'at. These these are books that uh, are filled with uh, Athar of the Salaf and are very very important with, with regards to the creed and methodology of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'at. Likewise, uh, this is very nice. Sheikh Rabi has explained uh, uh, Kitab al Sharia by Imam al-Ajuri, uh, which is also a classical text, but the Sheikh has explained it. So this is also a piece of gold that you need, uh, which is very beneficial to have in the Mektaba. And there's just so many texts we, we can't even begin. So anyway, those are important uh, books, uh, use, classical books that are explained by contemporary scholars. Those have a lot of benefits because really those athar of the Salaf, understanding the Madhab of the Salaf, uh, it takes fiqh. And it takes uh, going to the ulama because it would be a dangerous thing for someone just having the books and then just saying, well, you know, I read some athar of the salaf, I'm going to practice it like this. But rather, we learn from the tarbiyah of the ulama. Um, and really, you find in many of the aqidah, the classical uh, aqidah books, you'll find that, that you'll find aqidah in slash uh, uh, or quote, unquote, Minhaj, you'll find that too. As some of the ulama, they say that Minhaj and, and Aqidah are inseparable. Some say that they're more or less the same or inclusive. So <clears throat> without getting into those debates, but the point is, 
is that uh, that menhaj or that methodology, it's in those books of Akida. Because you'll see that a lot of times those books, those classical books, were written uh, refuting uh, many of the people of Ahle Bidah, refuting them. Then amongst contemporary books, there's so many uh, as far as it just depends on what issues you're talking about. I mean, there's so many general books, uh, beautiful books like, uh, you know, some of the books of uh, Imam bin Uthaymin, Rahmatul Ali, Imam bin Baz. Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi. So I can only give you names or ulama, but there's so many books. Uh, Imam Ahmed al Najmi, he's wrote, r- written extensively about, uh, especially menhaji issues. If you want to get into the, you know, uh, if if that's what you want to call it, uh, he he is really um, written fairly extensive. Obviously, Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al Madkhali as well. Uh, Sheikh Rabi uh, has written extensively. Uh, about those issues and has many books uh, regarding, uh, you know, how to deal with Ahl Bid'ah and, and so on and so forth. Um, but there's just so many, so many beneficial books. I wouldn't even really notice how, where, where to begin, or I wouldn't know where to take you. It's just in and of itself is a, is a task. But those are just some of the places for a person to start if they have the Arabic language. Uh, and if they don't have the Arabic language, then uh, you know, whatever's been translated for them. But the asal of that menhaj is going to come from those those uh, classical texts of uh, Aqidah. <clears throat> we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.